Okay, guys, this is Anthony here, Super D Service. I've got the Wounded Warriors excursion. It is 05 excursion, 04 engine. We're going to go ahead and uh, we're planning on doing lifters, so the engine's coming out. I got the heads apart. Let's see how we clean them. Before they go to the machine shop, this is how I clean them up. These are the intake valves. Those always get horribly disgusting. And so we clean the ports out, clean them up really good, get everything clean. Uh, got the turbo already done, it's off and clean. Got, you know, we're, yeah. Clean the ports in here. That's, uh, they're pretty freaking clean. Got the valves all cleaned up, they're ready to go. Shining, ready to go into, uh, this is how I, this is how I take them over to Meshmeyer and have them machined. Uh, go ahead and, I mean, they're, they're, they're borderline ready for assembly and ready to put together, but go ahead and put the liners in it and uh, valve grind, you know, surface, do all that, get them all, get them all done up. Uh, valve train, we are going to replace the retainers. I already had one break, one of them already broke, and it, uh, so we're just going to go ahead and replace all of them. Replace all the little plastic, here, let me show you better. Replace all the plastic retainers on the uh, rockers. Uh, the valve bridges looked okay. We'll we'll go with all that. So did the rocker arms. They looked all right. Uh, yeah, it did have the early model pump. So we are going to update that. Put we're going to have to do a cover and stuff. Uh, the turbo is clean, but the front housings we don't we don't have that done yet. We'll get that done. But uh, remember, we're going lifters. We're going to go ahead and do lifters on this. Um, it is 04, it's got the uh, four o'clock position, lower rad hose outlet, but I'm positive that it has a 100 millimeter coolant pump, so we won't pick on the front cover. Uh, Cause a lot of times if it has, you know, O3s, most early O3s will have a 90 millimeter coolant pump. And a good indication is the press in uh, coolant wipe pipe flange and a four o'clock position front cover. Uh, but this 04 engine, an 05 excursion, um, I put money on it that that's a 100 millimeter pump, so we're gonna go with that. But, now I'm kind of building up to this because it's, uh, we're going lifters, right? So I'm gonna have the crankshaft exposed. We, when we do lifters, we go ahead and do bed plate seal. It is a pretty good leaker. You know, it's it's been leaking. So, uh, we'll go lifters and total oil reseal. Get everything sealed up. But now remember, we're gonna have the crankshaft exposed. It's gonna be on the stand, upside down. Now look here. So, we had combustion leaking past the top compression ring. Now, will it run? Yeah, it'll run, we all know it'll run. Is it right? You tell me. You know, look here. You know, we got a couple of good ones. See, that one's not so bad. We're talking about the, the rust ring right here. Right there, you see it? That right there. That is below the top compression ring. So, you know, with as far as we're going in, refresh it. I mean, you know, I, I was like, you know, do we need to? I mean, can we put it back together and it run? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it'll run. I mean, it ran when it came in. You know, is it right? You know, does it, I mean, it's got 200,000 miles on it. Uh, stock EGR system in place and, you know, it just, uh, you can kind of see them really good there. You know, and, and when you go up top, it goes, see, it's just, I mean, combustion leaking past the top ring. So, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, you know, we got options. We could uh, just ball hone it. And cleaning pistons is horrible. It sucks, you know. I mean, we can buy Molly pistons cheaper than, it's, than uh, it would take for me to clean pistons, <laughs> you know. You clean enough of these freaking nasty, freaking carbon sooted up pistons. And, you know, it's not that expensive to buy the Molly pistons. Uh, I, you know, we, we get, we buy a lot of them, so we get a pretty good deal, so. You know, if we're gonna ball hone, 
I mean, if money was, was a serious issue uh, for the customer, I would probably let the customer clean pistons, give them the option, let them clean them, you know, show them how to do it, get nylon brushes and, you know, just, just clean it, clean the, the ring lands and everything. But uh, this one right here, you know, let's just, let's just go for it. I mean, it's Wounded Warriors. We, we want it to be, uh, pardon my phrase, Nat's ass fucking good as hell. <laughs> I mean, pardon my French, but so we're going to go ahead and punch them out and because, uh, you know, to do a machine, a power hone, all the real money is on setup, is getting it in the fixture and to get it cut. So if we if we go that route, let's just punch it out. You know, we're, we're probably going to go 20. Uh, I like 20s. They're a lot more available. We can do 10s, but I just... I don't know. I, I'm I'm sick of the availability of tens. Um, you know, we're gonna go twenty, which, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the last engine I did last what two weeks ago, last week, uh, we did it tens, and I wound up I, I don't know. I wound up freaking waiting on the freaking rings, and it's like you know what, just go twenty over. I mean, this is gonna be pretty much a repair for the lifetime of it. I mean. The phrase I like to say is, no human eyes will ever set eyes on the pistons again once we get done with it. You know, so who cares if it's 20? I mean, uh, we got the frame all done. Uh, we haven't done the top yet. Generally, I'll do that last. We'll cover, we'll get everything done here, and then I'll cover the whole thing up. Cover the entire frame, engine, everything, and then just go to town on the top. We're going to probably do it with that, uh, with aluminum. It's going to look almost chrome up top, but yeah, I mean, I get, I, I left the option and they, uh, were all on the same page. Uh, Ed came by here. He's with wounded warriors. He, he, uh, you know, he's like, heck with it. You know, we're, it, it's probably about another $2,500, uh, by the time we figure machine work. And let's look at the big picture too. You know, by doing the machine work and by getting it at the machine shop with the bare block, we're also gonna deck the block. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll have to blueprint it backwards and see what our protrusion is and check all the numbers to make sure that we have enough to deck the block, but I'm sure we do. You can see the mill marks are nice and far apart right here. See the mill marks in it. That right there tells me that this block has never been decked. So I've seen them all over the place. We, we got 35 thousandths we can go protrusion. You know, I, I mean, who knows? We'll see how much uh, we can cut off. But yeah, so we're we're going all in. Go ahead and complete disassembly. Get the rotating assembly out. Um, I'm a. I've been in the habit of balancing them lately too. We're gonna go ahead and balance it. Get the rotating assembly balanced. Get all the pistons matched. The rods matched and. Uh, uh, get the crank so it's balanced and yeah shoot throw some new lifters in it fire that sucker up and go to town but heads are all done they're getting ready to be, get sent off we'll get those off right now that way they'll be here waiting on us and then we'll get the block off probably at the end of today this afternoon we'll have the block uh, get it to the machine shop I don't know if I'll make it there tonight today or maybe first thing in the morning we'll have the block at the machine shop and and uh yeah time to start grabbing some parts and getting everything cleaned up and getting it ready for final assembly we also have got uh quite a few little things that we're going to be doing this this brake line is kind of bugging the crap out of me let me show you here pardon me here you see that right there that brake line look how corroded and nasty that thing is yeah we can't have that we can't have them go without brakes you know and and the We'll go ahead and leave the rest of them. We'll go ahead and leave these because they're really easy to replace afterwards. But the one that goes the length of the body, oh heck no. Let's just replace that sucker now. You know. And uh, power steering lines. You know, they're, well the transmission line also. See I had to unscrew it out. Because it's, uh, I mean I might be able to fight it and get it free. Same with this one. It doesn't look too bad. Oh, wow, that light's freaking bright. There you go. But we can, uh, uh, those lines are pretty cheap. 
we just buy the line going up to the housing. Once we get the engine out, we are uh, going to clean this all up and get it, get it all painted up all the way to the front, get everything all painted. And I haven't checked to see, uh, we're gonna do a redhead gearbox. We're gonna go ahead and get that, get it on its way. Um, if, I need to look close, I'm gonna clean these off when we get the hose out and uh, see if these are all Moog because when we're doing a redhead gearbox, if these are all Moog, which I don't know if they are, a lot of times Moog has it written on the dust boot, on the on the boot for the tie rod. If they're, uh, if they're Moog tie rods, we do this gearbox, I'll just warranty all of them and get all new tie rods and everything for it. But I don't know if they are. I mean, we can always replace that easily. We are gonna go ahead and put a new Pittman arm. Uh, that's freaking ridiculous. It's stupid to think to uh, put an old Pittman arm on a new redhead gearbox. Oh, heck no. We'll put a uh, put a new Pittman arm on the gearbox. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's it's it's going along. We're gonna pretty much do the stuff that we that is a lot easier to do with the body off. The rest of this stuff, like the drive shaft, stuff like that, man, we can knock that out easy. We can do that later. That, we don't need to do that right now. We definitely don't need to worry about that. Brake lines, that one brake line. See, the rest of them don't look too bad. This one right here. It don't look, I mean, it's kind of rusted here, but that's easy off after the fact. I mean, granted, if any of these were rusted, we would be replacing these now too. Uh, but they, they look they look fairly decent. Brake lines look to be okay. I have to check this other one coming over here. Kind of chasing it here. Sorry. Those, those look okay. Just that back one, that back brake line. And there's only one line going to the rear of the vehicle. So, and there's a coupler down here. We'll have to see how much of the line we're going to replace. But we do have a coupler right here. You know, and it doesn't look too bad on the front. We got quite a bit of rusting on the, on the little protective spring sleeve but it looks pretty freaking good in front of there. You know, it just is a matter of how well that fitting is gonna come apart. We'll decide what we, uh, what we do going there forward. I mean, I'll check it. If, if the front line, you know, if it's 20, 30 bucks, I'm gonna replace the whole rear line. I mean, that's just, you know, if it's 150 bucks, eh, we might think about it a little bit deeper then, who knows. But I imagine it's probably gonna be fairly, I don't know, I haven't checked on the price. Uh, oh, I guess there was problems every now and then. They do hook a four prong flat up, so we're gonna go ahead and get a new. We're just gonna get the whole assembly. Heck with it. We'll buy the whole thing. Okay, yeah, that's you know, there's no use in cutting, splicing, messing with that when you can buy the plug going from the plug down. Boom, there you go. With we, we don't need the seven prong adapter, but we can get the wire that has the four prong flat attached and then we can reuse the seven pin box. So, yeah. I don't know what else we got, who knows. Uh, they're really thinking about putting airbags on it now too. Uh, Bill Steens we can do afterwards. Uh, I think Julie was like really wanting to get it done because uh, pulling that 30 foot pontoon boat that they pull with this, he said, yeah, it's a, uh, it rides like every other excursion that's got stock ride height trying to tow something heavy <laughs> so you know we might as well address some address as many issues as we can i mean if we put they just can't do ride height we cannot raise the ride height you know so we got to do all we can do the redhead gearbox maybe put some bilsteins on it put some airbags on the back and hopefully that stiffens it up enough maybe do a slight re-arch on the front and maybe add a spring on the back or i don't know because we just cannot raise the truck anymore because it's 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 too hard to get uh, to get them in the truck to get you know to get the disabled veterans in the excursion. It's too hard if we do a taller ride height like what our excursion is. You know, a two and a half inch lift is out of the question. There's no way. But shoot, that's about it. I don't know. I'll make another video when we get closer. Maybe when I uh, get the pistons in and get the engine back but we are doing it it's going it's a wounded warriors excursion it's a pretty cool freaking deal that uh they chose us to do it that's freaking awesome we're gonna make them proud we're gonna do all we can to make them proud but 
All right. Have a good day, guys.